All right, this is second grade, module six, lesson eight, and we are going to continue moving towards those arrays. Ultimately, down the road, uh, our students are going to be talking about rectangles, like full-on rectangles, so they're going to be using multiplication to find the area of these rectangles. And this lesson is this incremental step towards that reality, because now instead of using teddy bears or Lego pieces, uh, we are now using square tiles to represent to create those arrays and but we're not quite officially making rectangles yet because we're going to allow gaps in our arrays with those tiles so let's get started so as i was saying basically we're going to have color tiles now and parents and teachers what you're going to do is if you're going to create let's say a row of five so there's our row of five and the idea is we don't need the students to have perfect, you know, non-gaposis, no gaps. We don't need this. What What's perfectly fine is if we have gaps, and it's even fine if the rectangles aren't even all lined up perfectly, right? So we want, that's a row of five. And of course, if we wanted to, we could create another row of five. And the idea is we're just kind of building things and building our arrays just like we have been only now, parents and teachers, you can kind of see that we're sort of getting towards official rectangles. Um, kind of like where down here, where all the, the squares, tiles are perfectly lined up and everything's looking great, right? That's what we're heading towards, but we're not there yet. Uh, it's perfectly fine for our students to leave gaps like this. Now, if you have some students who want to close these gaps, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's a point of differentiation. You can allow some students to do that if they wish. But right now, we're just kind of lining up our rectangle tiles, our, our square tiles, in nice little rectangles allowing gaps. So it says create an array with the squares. So I've made my squares, and you'll notice there's two rows here and so we are going to be taking our squares and we're making two rows and I'm just kind of alternating one top bottom top bottom that way I can figure out oh look at that there are six square tiles in each row. I have two rows of six. Now down here, I thought this was a little tricky because we're using the same set of squares, right? Same number of squares, but this time you see three lines, but really what Eureka Math is expecting is they're expecting four columns. So these lines down here, whereas this the squares are sitting on the horizontal lines like sh like a shelf. So you've got two shelves. But here you've got three lines, but you're actually going to end up creating four columns. And that's a little, I think, a little arbitrary, a little confusing for our second graders. Don't let them get freaked out by that. And that's perfectly fine. So your little Dwayne Hobecker bonus, we have two groups of six and then down here we have four groups of three and uh, that was not necessary <clears throat> that's just me adding to it but what the real tricky thing is is up here when you see two lines you actually have two rows whereas down here when you have three lines you actually have four columns and I think that's a little confusing so just heads up parents and teachers now here the directions say draw an array with 15 squares that has three squares in each columns. So think of all the vocabulary going on here. So from a, a universal design for learning or from an English language learner's point of view, um, man, there is just tons of vocabulary going on. So parents and teachers, please create a word wall. Have these 
pictures up on the wall so that students, whenever they see the word array, they can look at the wall and re- be ref- have their memories refreshed of what is an array, what is a square, what is a column. So that's another important word as well. So we are being asked to create an array with three squares in each column. So there's three squares in one column, and we're just going to keep going, and we're going to build our array using column by column, going column by column, column by column, and column by column. So there we go. We have our array of 15 squares, three squares in each column, and really if we wanted to, we could say 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, and we can add up all of those 3s, and uh, we, of course, would indeed get our 15. Oh, in fact, look at this. It says write a repeated addition equation to match the array, and look what I did. There it is. I'll just bring it down here. So that's one repeated addition that we could do. And really, if you want to think about it, other students might say, but we have 5 going in this row, <clears throat> and we have 5 in this row, and 5 in this row. So those students might prefer to put 5 plus 5 plus 5 equaling 15 as their array, and that would be perfectly fine as well. And that wraps up second grade module six, lesson eight, creating arrays using square tiles. But at this point, we're allowing gaps, so we're still kind of being informal.